Welcome back to Knox's Artillery. On this episode, episode number five, we're going to show you how we make our black ball for our unit. What exactly is black ball, you might be asking yourself. Uh, and as you can see from the photograph, it looks somewhat similar to today's modern black shoe polish, although it does differ in several ways, but its use was the same. It was to treat and protect leather and many other things. Thankfully, we have a period correct recipe from this gentleman here, Reverend Charles Beatty. Uh, who lived from 1712 until 1772, left us an excellent recipe in one of his many journals. And what Charles recorded reads as such. To make curious black ball, to two ounces of fine mutton suet well clarified, one ounce of beeswax, which melt with the suet, then mix with them well, one ounce of ivory black, then pour it out into any china cup or vessel you like, let it lay until next day, and then knock it out and it will be fit for use. So let's head back to the workshop and begin. Uh, the first ingredient we're going to work with here is our beeswax. We're going to scale up the recipe and we're going to go with uh, two ounces of beeswax. All right, we'll weigh out our chunk of beeswax, which comes out to 2.4 ounces. It's close enough. We'll get that into the melting pot to start melting. And we switch over and get our mutton tallow. All right, we've got our uh, correct mutton tallow here. We got this off of a uh, seller on Etsy. It seems to be pretty good quality. And we're gonna dole out uh, four ounces of the tallow onto the scale. And to our two ounces of melting beeswax, we'll add our four ounces of mutton tallow. With the mutton's tallow and the beeswax all melted down, we'll move on to the lamp black. And here we have our lamp black, which we also got off of Etsy. Uh, a real fine powder. It's jet black. It's almost like a coffee toner, and it will stain anything it touches black, so just be careful. All right, we're gonna go ahead now and add our lamp black to our beeswax and mutton tallow mixture. And though we don't have any of the china vessels that Reverend Beatty spoke of, we do have a tin foil baking tin here that we'll pour the mixture into. As you can tell it's become somewhat viscous. There's a couple clumps in there. I believe I should have maybe sifted out the lamp black to get it smoother before mixing it up, but this is our first time doing this and overall I think it came out pretty good. All right, we're going to cover this with a rag and let it sit for 24 hours to set up. All right, it's been 24 hours since we poured our black ball mixture. It's now firmly set. And uh, like I kind of alluded to at the top of the episode, it really looks and feels like a modern shoe polish. I'm mean, wearing gloves because uh, whatever I touch, it, as you can see here, gets all over my fingers. So I'm trying to keep them uh, somewhat clean. All right, we're going to go ahead here and break up the black ball into manageable sizes. I'm not going to bother rounding them into a ball. They're going to end up getting rubbed onto leather, so they're going to develop flat edges as they are used. And why not, before we package these up for the soldiers of the regiment, to just give it a quick test. We're going to rub it onto that black leather belting we made in our last episode. And as you can see there, it goes on, spreads out nice, it works into the leather. Looks like we have a good, usable black ball. Alright, the last step is to package them up. I'm just going to use some simple brown paper, tie them up in a ball, and that will get uh, issued out to the reenactors uh, portraying the soldiers of Henry Knox's regiment, uh, along with one of their rations at upcoming events. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions for the recipe, please leave them in the comments below. And always remember to like and subscribe, and we hope to see you back here for more episodes on Knox's Artillery.